Well, good morning, or excuse me, good afternoon. Um, uh, thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, we have uh, obviously spent the last week, uh, for sure, uh, talking with the governor since uh, the regular session about how to come to some uh, compromise or agreement on how to close out uh, these final bills that were vetoed. So um, we are today uh, announcing that we are going to accept the governor's offer from the last night of session. Uh, which was an increase of spending of $525 million uh, over base on K-12 education without uh, any policy uh, compromises and um, without uh, pre-K. So that's where we left it on the last night of session. Uh, we were still apart at that time, as you remember, and, and was reported in the media. Um, so we are accepting that, that offer of his from the last night of session. Uh, we still do have some uh, outstanding issues on a couple of the other bills. We think those are minor. Um, in fact, we have a meeting uh, this afternoon to work out those differences um, on some of those other bills, and that should uh, get us wrapped up. So my hope is that we can get this wrapped up fairly quickly, um, and we can uh, provide folks who, frankly, are going to be getting layoff notices within the hour. Um, we can provide them with some certainty that they will have a job on July 1st, and we think that that's very important as well. So um, we are announcing that we're, we're accepting the governor's offer from the last night of session. Has the governor accepted his offer from the last night of session? I guess that would be a great question for the governor. Um, I, I, I will tell you, and, and while I do have a great relationship with the governor, um, and, and I do have a, a great deal of respect for him and, and, and his passion on these issues, um, I have been a little bit frustrated. Uh, the, the moving goalposts uh, have been a little difficult uh, for us to find at times, but um, you know, I haven't been in St. Paul very long. Uh, but what I have realized is uh, that you got to work with folks, and, and folks at home expect us to come here and get our work done. They expect us to work with each other and work well with each other. They expect us to compromise. Um, and, and most of all, uh, your word has to be good in St. Paul. So um, I guess your question for the governor will be, does he accept his own offer? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, the governor uh, did not come back to the table on Friday afternoon uh, before we went out to the press. Um, so we, I did not get to speak with him uh, before we spoke with the press on Friday afternoon. Um, but this is, uh, you know, shows significant movement on our part. Uh, if you remember, um, you know, and this, this chart basically shows the, the yellow line on the top is the governor. Um, the, the blue line on the bottom is us. Uh, we passed a bill, and I'll, I'll draw your attention to, to this point. Um, we passed a bill uh, when we came to bipartisan agreement with the Senate. Um, at $400 million of spending over base on, on K-12 education. That day, the governor moved his offer to 550. Um, and then over the course of the next couple of days, uh, the governor said that, that he would veto the bill unless we went to 550 on spending. Um, in that final day of session, I agreed to go to 500. So between 400 and 550, we agreed to go to 500 because we wanted to wrap this up. We wanted there to be some certainty and we wanted to get this uh, closed out. Um, that night, the governor came down to 525, and, and this literally happened at about 11.30 p.m. on the last night of session. Uh, so it was literally in the 11th hour uh, of, the, of the final night of session that, that those concessions were made. So um, we're going to go that last little bit. Even though we're going far beyond halfway, uh, we're going to do what we think Minnesotans expect us to do, uh, which is get our work done, uh, be reasonable and compromise. And, and so that's why we're making this uh, move today. So we think that this uh, should be able to get things wrapped up fairly quickly. Um, and, and you know, we also are, are you know, our, our members are, are uh, happy to, to spend uh, money on, on K-12 education. Uh, part of that provision on the last night of session was the Republicans said any additional money that we spend um, on K-12 education, the first 63 million needs to go onto the formula to make that a full two and 2% 2 uh, on the formula. Um, so that will be part of this as well. So. What happened to the transgender language and the LIFO language that you brought into the negotiating table on Friday? Uh, they were not part of the governor's offer on the last night of session, and they're not part of our accepting his offer. But they were as of Friday. So what happened over the weekend that you decided those well, were? Well, remember the governor moved since his 525 on the last night of session. He went back to 650 with full pre-K. Um, then he went down to 550 uh, with pre-K, then 550 without pre-K. So that was all part of... Uh, negotiations, and at this point, um, we're leaving them on the sidelines. Uh, Sir, you want to get back two billion dollars now? 
Okay, so 550 or whatever is out of that picture. What what's that for that you want that you're going to return to the taxpayers that you, you originally wanted to give two billion back? We're going to leave uh, this. This uh, will leave eight hundred and seventy-five million dollars on the bottom line, uh, which we believe will turn into likely uh, a billion and a half, potentially by or more, uh, by next session. So um, we're going to deal with uh, the tax bill next session. Uh, if you remember that Democrats, uh, specifically Senator Bach, um, said that if there was no gas tax increase, there would be no transportation plan and there would be no tax bill. Um, so that was a line in the sand that Democrats drew, uh, and unfortunately, they weren't willing to cross that. They wanted to, you know, at a time when we have a $2 billion surplus, or almost, they wanted to increase taxes on, on middle-income Minnesotans and, and lower-income Minnesotans in, in the most regressive way possible by increasing the largest gas tax in state history. I'm sorry, that was just not acceptable uh, to us in this environment. So uh, it was Democrats who pulled that tax bill off the table. Do you so. think the Senate will support this as well? Well, Senator Bach uh, was clear in saying that uh, that he would, um, you know, leave it up to the to the governor and I to negotiate the differences, and you know, this is where we're at. So my, my assumption is yes, they will. In terms so, so of negotiations. Why are you presenting this to us rather than the governor? You have well, a meeting scheduled with him. Today. I would I would be happy. No, I don't have a meeting scheduled with the governor. I think staff has a meeting scheduled at 1:30 today. Um, the the governor actually. Um, and I don't remember the timing on Friday, but uh, we were together, we took a break, uh, we came back together, the governor did not come back to the table, um, and the message that we got was the governor wasn't coming back unless uh, we met his number. So we're meeting his number. No, you're not. He said he wasn't gonna meet, he said he wasn't gonna go back to the table unless it was 5.50, this is 5.25, right? Which, which maybe you understand why I get a little frustrated with the moving goal, so. Uh, on the last night of session, this was the offer the governor made. Um, if he was willing to accept it then, I'm certain he's willing to accept it now. It's his offer. Uh, so that's why, that's why we're accepting his offer from the last night of session. Why so, are you certain that he's willing to accept it now when his lieutenant governor said very clearly that was an offer in time and place, and you're past that time and you're past that place? Well, since then, we've had four different offers from the governor's office, all looking different with different dollar amounts and different policy. And frankly, I'm tired of chasing my tail for the last two weeks. So uh, we, we want this to be finished. We think that folks who get layoff notices today ought to have some certainty. And if the governor is serious about closing this out and doing it representing priorities that he and we both care about, then his, his offer from the last night of session ought to be reasonable and ought to be accepted uh, by him. Um, if, 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 he want, if this is about shutting down or playing political games, um, then I assume he won't accept his own offer. Uh, but our assumption is, and, I, and I, I, I say that in the most polite way possible. I, I, I'm being a little forthright here, but uh, I think it's important uh, for us to all show that we're leaders, to step up and do the job that Minnesotans sent us here to do. Um, so that's why we're accepting his offer from the last night of session. So just confused here. So you, you guys are now at the point where you're arguing over $25 million and a $42 billion Three, three tenths of 1%. And, and that's where we have been since the last night of session. Remember, we were at 500 on the last night of session. He was at 550 on the last night of session. I have not moved from that position that we were at in the last night of session. He has moved about four times since then. Um, so, and, and that's I, for, for a good reason. And, and, you know, he wanted different policy and, and different things included, uh, which is fine. That's what happens in negotiations. We can certainly talk about all kinds of things. Um, but the bottom line is uh, we were 25 million apart on the last night of session. We were 25 million apart until 10 minutes ago. We're accepting his offer from the last night of session. Can, can I chime in on that? Sure, yeah. You know, I think the key thing here, too, is look at where we're at. The governor has come down 169 million from his uh, initial offer. We have gone up 368. So if it's about 25 million, it's the governor who hasn't shown the movement. And we'll find out today. We'll find out today what this is about. The layoff notice notices are going out. And if the governor truly cares about the teachers, the kids, as he says he is, then we assume he'll accept this offer because the notices are going to go out and people want people expect certainty. Frankly, it was frustrating. You. Um, Rachel, you asked about uh, LIFO, and all we presented was simply going to the default policy. And we don't believe that kids should have to have a teacher based on a, the quality of the teacher based on a coin flip, but apparently that was 
out of the question for the governor, even though it was just the real light default, removing the default language, and it's disappointing. But today we'll find out how serious the governor is, if he wants to have create a shutdown or if he wants to um, take care of the kids. In the uh, veto letter on the environment bill, there were nine specific objections. Where are you on that? I think that right now, um, we were at the point where I think there was maybe three left, and we were working out language on those three uh, points. And that's what the staff is going to go into a room uh, this afternoon mm -hmm. and, and kind of dig into a little deeper with everybody kind of all in the same room so we can just work through the differences. But I think we're fairly close on those. Um, we've made some concessions. Uh, I think the governor has, is, is making some concessions. So uh, I don't believe that those other bills, either the environment or the jobs bill, uh, will hold up anything at this point. I think we're getting uh, to the point where um, you know, it was really just language. We had conversations about the concepts in those bills and the concepts in the in the in the points that the governor had delineated in his in his not in the veto letter, but in his um, offer uh, letter that came back to us. Things he wanted fixed in those bills. Um, and, and in general, we agreed on the concept of those bullet points. So I think right now we're just looking for language that um, executes the concepts that we had agreed upon. Just want to make sure I'm clear here. The governor said on Friday he doesn't want to get into the room unless it's 550 million. And now you're saying you don't want to go. Are you saying that you don't want to go higher than 525? I am saying that we're accepting the governor's offer on the last night of session. Um, if uh, if the governor's word wasn't good on the last night of session and he's not willing to to accept his own offer, um, I'm done chasing my tail. So uh, you know I'm going to draw a line in the sand here and say. Uh, enough is enough, and, and I, I don't, the, the moving target and the chasing my tail has been uh, futile. Uh, we obviously have compromised far more than the governor has. Um, I understand he was passionate about pre-K, and that really was what this was about. Um, he took uh, pre-K from 170 million down to 100. Then he removed that policy, but didn't remove the money. He wanted it spent on other things. Um, you know, the, the fact that pre-K didn't pass either the House or Senate, um, and school districts, frankly, aren't asking for a universal pre-K program. Um, the timing just isn't right for that. And, and you know, for the, for the governor to give it up on the last night of session and then put it back in place, and then late in the day Friday uh, verbally tell us, okay, I'll take pre-K off the table. And I think he also told the press that. Um, but literally for four days last week, pre-K was back on the table after he had taken it off the table. So um, it, it has been a little frustrating uh, over the course of the last week. And, and um, you know, I think I had said that to the press. As long as we start negotiating where we left off in the last night of session, this will wrap up quickly. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, that's still where we are. We're still 25 million apart. And though it take us, it took us four days to get the governor back to that point. That's where we are again. So now we're just going to move that 25 million, and we'll accept the governor's offer. Um, let's get this wrapped up. Let's show the folks who are going to receive layoff notices today that there is some certainty, that we're, we're setting aside our partisan differences uh, to do what Minnesotans expect us to do. Um, and we're going to make the bigger step here and, and compromise a little more. That's OK. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, you got to show leadership once in a while. Um, we're willing to do that. But we're willing to do it because we think it's, it's what's right uh, for Minnesotans. So, Why didn't you just do it on the last night of session then? You know, we frankly just ran out of time. We just ran out of time. I mean, we were trading offers at 11.30 and 11.45. I literally walked out of the office. Whatever time I went back on the, on the, on the rostrum on the last night of session, I had literally left the office uh, with the, the governor's chief of staff and walked straight to the rostrum. So whatever time the video shows I got to the rostrum is what time we stopped talking. We just ran out of time. How important is this two and two? This, I don't know if this is a maybe a Chair Loon question, but you know Governor Dayton at one point said in, de, in defense of his universal pre-K that yeah. he didn't want more of the same. Um, some would argue two percent is more of the same, but others would say it's, it's saving districts from layoffs. I guess. Well, it, it is, and I'll, I'll let uh, Chair Loon uh, speak as well. Um, it was a condition that we put on to putting additional money in. It was something that came up on the last night of session. When we moved from $400 million to $500 million on the last night of session, uh, we put a condition on it that the first 63 had to go into uh, two and two in the formula so that that money ends up in every classroom for every student in the state of Minnesota. And, and that's what school districts were asking for. So if we were going to make a concession, uh, to spending more money, we wanted to make sure that every student in the state of Minnesota got the benefit of that. So that was why we did that. Since then, uh, the governor, that has been kind of generally accepted between the governor and us. So I, I think that there's not a lot of disagreement at this point on, on that point, but I'll let Chair Lewin speak as well to that. 
Yes, well, money on the formula is generally what school districts would prefer because that is the most flexible stream of funding that we provide. There's a number of streams that go to, to schools, but a lot of them have specific strictures in terms of uh, the types of students it's, it's intended for and only that or different types of funding. The formula funding is as districts can determine what best serves the needs of their particular students, their particular district. So, you know, even even a district who wants to do a, a pre-K program can take that formula money and do and do it with that uh, because it's not restricted in terms of the purpose. If they want to do uh, hire more teachers, if they want to reduce class sizes, uh, start a new program of some kind, that is that is how districts can do it, and that's really how they would prefer us to give them their funding. Envision revisiting uh, LIFO next session, or you wait till you get another on this E12 bill two years from now. Well, you know, we've got a, another year of session left, and, and I will say this um, publicly, you know, um, since being named Education Finance Chair uh, back in November, um, I have not had the opportunity to meet with the governor. I have uh, talked to his staff and said I would really like the opportunity to sit down with him. I think even I even talked to the lieutenant governor about it uh, at a reception he hosted at the residence. So I hope the governor and his staff will take me up on that and we can start early and talk about um, shared priorities. Um, I think that's the way to start things off right. And, um, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can wrap up this year's bill, give some certainty that to the school districts. Uh, I want teachers and students and parents to know that we've got a great bill in place to make sure everything's going to run smoothly. And then if we want to do some more things next year, I am more than willing to sit down with the governor and uh, also my counterpart in the Senate. Senator Weger and I have a terrific working relationship, and uh, we'll see what else we can do next year. Yeah, I, I would just on top of that as well, the, the LIFO provision that we brought up on Friday um, was a compromise position. We, we frankly uh, were saying, let's just remove the default in statute, which would then leave it up to school districts and teachers to negotiate whatever they wanted uh, between, between those parties. So. Um, there was no additional language, no requirement for, uh, uh, you know, uh, evaluations or, or those sorts of things. It really was just let's remove it from statute and leave it up to the districts and the teachers uh, to, to uh, work those differences out in their negotiations. This is an issue that 80% of Minnesotans uh, support. Um, and, and frankly, I think the, the public uh, pressure on this issue will continue. Um, until we remove that provision from statute. Uh, the, you know, obviously there's a, a Democrat chief author of that bill in the Senate this year. Um, so there is bipartisan support uh, for reforming uh, our teacher tenure policies. And, and uh, frankly, we, d we don't even want the state to get involved. We just want uh, to remove that, that, that default position from statute so that the local districts can work it out with the local teachers. Could you clarify your objection to going to 550? Is it just a matter of the movement here? Is it a matter of the money? Because the money's available, right? What's your objection to going to 550? Uh, you know, I don't, I, it, it, it's just an arbitrary number. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the governor, and this is the part that <laughs> was, was confusing for me too, but, uh, you know, he, he, in his latest proposal, it was 100 million for pre-K, but then when he got rid of the pre-K, he didn't get rid of the 100 million that he was spending on it. So it, it really, these are just arbitrary numbers. Um, and as long as they're invested in the right place, we're okay with spending up to, to 525. Um, there is a point at which I think there's kind of diminishing returns if you were to put more money in. For instance, uh, the, the, the agreement that I think we have now is, um, to split money between scholarships and school readiness. Um, the scholarships, we're getting to the point where putting more money into these programs may be more than capacity than they can even spend in this two-year period. So there's a point of diminishing returns with investing more money um, in, into those programs this biennium. So, uh, you know, for instance, if we had an extra 100 million to put that into these programs, they wouldn't be able to spend it during this two-year period. Um, they have to ramp up for those programs. So uh, while we believe early childhood is incredibly important um, and, and, and we'd love to invest more money in, in you know, programs that are really going to close the achievement gap and solve these problems, targeted investments in, in scholarships, uh, those are programs that you know, the data shows those really work. Um, 
there's a there's a point at which you know those need to be ramped up. So um, that's what we're working on. Has he had any contact with the governor's office today to talk about this? I talked with the lieutenant governor earlier. I didn't talk to her about this. Uh, just I talked to her about the policy provisions and the other bills. Um, and and staff is meeting this afternoon on those. Is so. this the only loose end to call a special special session, or are there other? things in the environment bill or jobs bill that you're still working on? I think we're really close on those. Like I said earlier, we believe uh, we have agreement in concept on those bills. We just need to find the language that executes the, the concept uh, that we agree upon. So um, my thinking is we could probably have a signed agreement that we, that we have agreement on what's in those bills uh, by the end of the day today or, or early tomorrow, and we could have a special session yet later this week if, if, if we can get everybody ready and on the same page. What does that mean for broadband funding and some of the regulatory changes in the environment bill? You know, I won't go into the details of, of those bills uh, at this point, um, but uh, those bills will look a, much like they did when they left the, the House and the Senate. What about revisiting the state auditor issue that the governor has asked you to do? Um, you know, obviously that's something that he wants to do. Uh, that bill was signed. Um, it becomes difficult at this point uh, for us to even find a vehicle to run that language in now, let alone find the votes to, to reverse that. So um, there isn't a, a huge urgency on that particular issue because the, the language uh, doesn't take effect until I think it's a year and a half. I, mean, I know it's over a year. So we can still revisit that after the legislative auditor's report. Um, we can still revisit it next session and make a change if, if that's still necessary. So is this your Friday offer without the policy in it? Yes. Yep. That's what this is. Yep. And can I add something to that sure. to, yeah. to your question about the, is it just about the dollar amount? Well, first of all, you can see that we've already compromised 200 million more. And I believe the, the original bill that the House and Senate passed was about an 8% increase. And we have talked all session and we frequently talk about how important it is for us to not grow government faster than our family budgets. And so, uh, you know, while we do have a surplus this year and there will be some dollars on the bottom line, the problem is there might not be a surplus in two years or four years, but yet once we've funded something, we have to continue funding it and it, and it grows at a higher and higher level. So um, from at least my perspective, the governor really hasn't moved very much, 169 million versus 368 million. So if there's another 25 million to move, I, I think that you know the governor talked four years ago about meeting halfway, and he has not even come close to meeting us halfway here. And one, just one other thing too. The other reason for an urgency in the special is the avian flu issue, and that continues to be a huge problem. We're hearing from our rural members how we absolutely have to get this done so that we can uh, deal with that issue and that funding can be. Um, out there, otherwise there's another crisis. So that's why we're we're really, um, you know, we're really willing to compromise more than we wanted to because that absolutely has to be done for all the turkey farmers in the industry. Anything else? I'm just curious. I mean, it's more than just money. I mean, if I were the governor, I'd be just mad, probably mad at you because I lost my big thing. I lost the thing I cared about the most, my stated goal, the thing I was was on fire about. Well, you know, unfortunately for all of us, uh, we've all had to make uh, concessions. You know, one of our big priorities was having a transportation plan and uh, a long-term transportation plan. We proposed putting $7 billion of new money into roads and bridges over the next 10 years. We had to walk away from that because Democrats insisted on increasing the largest gas tax in, in, in state history. So, uh, it, and, and I'll go back to on the governor's priority of pre-K and I, I, I'm, I, I respect his passion on this issue, uh, but it was his job uh, to, to earn the support and, and earn the, the grassroots and, and groundswell of support for that issue through the last five months of the legislative session. And that didn't happen. Um, remember that it didn't pass the House or the Senate. Uh, so, and, and it's really not something that school districts are asking for. Uh, we think that it causes more problems for school districts. So uh, that policy is, is premature. And, and what the governor needs to do, if he is passionate about that, is uh, spend some time over the next year or two years uh, advocating for that issue. And, and we'll have that conversation again the next time we do the state's budget. 
date were to accept this offer today, how quickly could a special session happen? I think we could do it yet this week, um, maybe on Friday. Uh, we haven't really talked about those details. We were actually shooting for potentially today or tomorrow um, if we wrapped things up late last week. When that didn't happen, obviously, uh, you know, it, it takes some time. We do need, need to give some members some notice. I know I've got members that are six hours away, and uh, you know, we need to give them some notice, uh, a few days at least, uh, so they can get here. Um, but uh, members are eager to get this wrapped up and get it finished. Um, I think we all uh, want to provide some certainty to folks who are getting layoff notices today that that's unnecessary and they can kind of disregard those that we do have an agreement will, that will uh, ensure that they uh, will have a job come July 1st. So we think that's important. So, okay, thank you so much.